Hey everybody, welcome to another Goodie Reader Review video. My name is Michael. This is Peter. Today we're proud to give you a comprehensive hands-on of the new Acurus Illumina HD. Now, what is the specs on this? Well, you're looking at about one gigahertz processor, 1024 by 768 in terms of the resolution, 512 MB of RAM, you have Wi-Fi, 4 gigs of internal memory, 32 gigs expandable via the micro SD, and you have roughly about a month or two of battery life. Peter here is going to show you what this is all about. Definitely doesn't look like the conventional e-reader if we put this up against, say, 2013 Kobo Aura. You see it's a very square design, features its flush bezel and screen. The Illumina looks like pretty much nothing else. It has full buttons top to bottom. The closest thing I could relate it to is the Nook Simple Touch, but it uh, definitely doesn't look like the Paper White, the Kobo line, or the Sony readers. It features home button, more, D-pad, enter, back, and a refresh button that also doubles as the glow light. Physical page turn buttons, nothing on either side. The bottom is clean. The side on the back has the SD card slot upgradable to 32 gigs and you have your SD uh, your uh, micro USB headphone jack hard reset button power button and LED indicator on the top. So the big hyping factors about the C reader physical page turn buttons, but it's also a full touch screen as well. Absolutely. So you're getting the best of both worlds. Acurus is really appealing to people who dig physical buttons and then also to people that like, you know, uh, touch screen navigation. This is one of the few e-readers out there currently on the market actually with a headphone jack. So you can listen to music, audiobooks, and so on. But what we've noticed is you actually need to plug in uh, headphones in order to listen to audio. You can't even access the audio menu uh, without headphones. Right. So this is the main UI. It's fairly basic. Um, there's really nothing to write home about in terms of like settings and things like that. There's really no type of you know games or anything on this. This is an e-reader first and foremost. So let's take a look at the book experience if we click on books. You have different folders here. It comes preloaded with anything you see with the language, Espanol, Francais, Italian. You can actually, go, when you plug this into your computer, you can right click to create new folders and add whatever you like. You'll see here we have a goodie reader folder. This is where we kind of dumped all of our uh, usual media. So we have our Dungeons and Dragons Monsters Manual, which is about a 100 MB file. We also have a smaller um, cellular biology PDF and we have a preloaded, uh, a side-loaded um, EPUB book. Okay, so looking at this, it, it's, this is one of the few e-readers out there with not a lot of customizable options to create your own shelves to, uh, you know, a lot of deep features for shelf management. It's basically, uh, like Peter said, you have to plug it into your computer, create folders with the Windows Explorer. Um, it's not advanced no. in terms of like shelf management and, and ebook organization. You're really going to have to rely on programs like Calibre uh, in order to do it properly. So this is how a book looks by default. Now this, the ebook experience with ePubs, you can't really do highlights, annotations, or anything like that. You can't look words up in a dictionary. There's really nothing really too distracting, but there's a lot of options for font management looks very similar to the simple touch uh, layout. You have a couple font options here. You have line spacing. You also have a more next to the line spacing so you can click on that and you get several different degrees of that. You can also change the margins. You have publisher's default, high bottom bar and use the setting for other books so if you customize all this stuff top to bottom with your fonts, line spacing and so forth you can actually hold this predetermined settings is kind of like a preset so when you open other books you'll be able to use that. Yeah, wh when Peter showed you the uh, line settings and margins features it actually gives you a ton of different options as well for your fonts. Right. So uh, this is one thing that kind of impressed me is uh, it has a lot of uh, advanced options to really find that sweet spot with your EPUB books. And Let's just see what the extreme looks like. I think we're all curious here what 72 looks like on an e-reader. 
I bet it lists maybe like 10 words per page. I'm going to say there's going to be like a giant, oh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, oh, pretty close, yeah. 12. <laughs> so the e-reading experience is pretty comfortable. Um, I mean, yeah, you get all the options you need to conform it to as big or as small as you really want it. You get lots of line spacing options. Everything changes live for the most part. Sometimes the menu disappears. You also have this, the usual things like searches, go-to page, screen rotation. It doesn't have a gyroscope, so gravity will not allow it to change on its own. You also have auto page settings and auto page turning. Those are kind of weird because it'll turn the page for you every whatever amount of seconds. I wouldn't really focus too much on that. Yeah, you so if you, read. yeah, if, I mean, if you have it like on a kickstand or like some sort of display stand, and you and you want uh, a slideshow of pictures or uh, of pages, maybe like for a retail environment, yeah. I could see that being practical. But for like a real life reading books, not so much. No. So here's the PDF experience, and a and a curse has really done uh, a pretty good job in handling PDFs. So. This is sort of how it looks by default. As you can see, some things are like cut off, but you know, through touch screen navigation, you could, you know, scroll around per page. But there is a number of like options in terms of like reflow and things like that. Uh, there's two different ways that PDFs look, uh, or the, they could change depending on what you do. You can change it to text reflow only and original format. So these are, you could kind of text only strip away all the, the CSS and, and images and just go for a pure text experience. But when you, it's, what's important to note is if you go to reflow mode and if you turn, uh, you know, uh, the text only mode on, you can see it's kind of messed up. Mm -hmm. What you have to do is actually go to font settings and then find that sweet spot for the, like the, you know, whatever you're reading for the text to display properly. It does look a lot better now. Yeah, um, it, it's trial and error. It all depends on like, w you know, what sort of book that you're looking at. Not all PDFs are the same, obviously. Some are very different. So you're going to have to kind of experiment with each book to get the optimal settings. Um, if you want to say turn reflow off, you can still change the font options. So we'll go to original format and we'll go to page settings. This is really the only way you're going to be able to zoom is when you change the text size. What happens then is you get a section that is all cut out for you. You see these lines? They're kind of dividing lines of where you're going to kind of travel to next. You can't really drag or anything like that. You can't pinch and zoom. It's a really kind of inconvenient way to view a PDF, but you, it, you can get there. Yeah, I mean, um, here at Goody Reader, sometimes we're spoiled by reviewing so many different devices. And, um, you know, what's impressed us about uh, some of the other e-readers, like, say, the Kobo Aura, within PDFs, you can pinch and zoom. Uh, there's a lot of kind of cool features to, you know, uh, scroll around and stuff. And um, with the Curris, um it, it gets the jobs done. It's certainly not the most advanced PDF uh, experience on the market, but it, it, it does it pretty adequately. Right. Um, this is standard image. No you real way to change it. You can, uh, you can do things like set as your screensaver, screen rotation. You have different options like image and image, and you can kind of... Uh, you can't really zoom or pinch and zoom or double tap to get any other view than what it really is. So you're really stuck with this. There's not, it's not too customizable with anything image related. No, I mean, that. you know, you could load in your own images right. and it supports like a, a multitude of like image formats. So, um, you, you know, GIFs, PNGs, BMPs, JPEGs. I mean, there's, there's a lot. Um, okay, so the things that I like about this e-reader is that it just puts reading first. Right. And, and too many, like, uh, readers get distracted by, uh, you know, highlights and, you know, note-taking and, like, handwriting and all this stuff. But people statistically just want to read a book, you know? Um, there's really no integrated bookstore on here, so you're going to have to basically uh, buy books yourself and then load them onto here via Adobe Digital Editions. And there's advanced settings in here to, to implement your Adobe account, so uh, no big deal there. Um, 
you can download books for free off the internet or you could just like download you know pirated books if that's your thing you can do a lot of things um, but I like the fact that this does audiobooks there's few e-readers out there in the market that will allow you to listen to mp3s audiobooks and all that jazz that, that's impressing me um, so the things that you know things that are like physical page turned keys it does have the illuminated display and you just hold your hand on that button to turn it on and then you can use like the d-pad while holding that down to check the different like levels there's only eight different levels so it's not as deep and crisp as say like the paperweight or the the Kobo Aura in terms of you know uh, versatility and uh, being able to find that really optimal settings this is kind of like a bit lackluster in terms of uh, illumination configuration levels um, all in all I, I like this e-reader and we'd like to hear your thoughts on what you guys have to say about it um, you can drop a comment on this YouTube video or if you're watching this uh, video on another website, it's youtube.com slash goodereader and for goodereader.com and a review of the Accurus Illumina HD. My name is Michael. This is Peter. Everybody take care.